returned once again today to deliver another stream of Golden Kamui. On this stream, we are covering... Wow, that was... <laughs> that, that actually kicked in very, very soon. It kind of scared me slightly. Um, yeah, so we are back today covering episode 10 of Golden Kamui. And as we know, it's getting pretty freaking serious at this very stage of the narrative. We're getting to the kind of the big finale, I would say. We're on episode 10, we've got two episodes left. And it's kind of, it's heating up. So she's such, she, ah, I actually can't speak today. My brain's just not letting me. Especially with Shirashi's character, Hijigata, as well, which actually happens to be some kind of things going on there. We know it's actually going to impact us even more to as well. We've got Surimi as well. We've got all those things going on. we also got um, Tanigaki as well, which happens to also, I guess, possibly be a major part of this episode as well. But either way, we've got a lot going on, and it's actually pretty freaking cool so far, I must say. It's actually looking out to be a very, very big finale, I must say. So, yeah. So, yeah. All that said, let's actually, let's actually get a show on the road. On Twitter first, I've gone live. Alright, so gone live for a golden comedy episode 10. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's correct. I had to change over all my setup this week, so <laughs> my brain's sort of still kind of adjusting to a new kind of setup again. I, every single week I say that, but it's true. This week I actually had to change my computer over completely. So I've got a new computer and everything, so it's, it's just getting used to everything once again. But anyway, enough talk of my IRL problems when it comes to um, computer computers, I should say. Let's get this show on the road. So, with all that said, let's start this thing in three. Two, one, let's get this thing now. Hello, how's it going? As I always say every single week, I believe the characters characters in this show are so fantastic that you actually can carry the na carry the narrative narrative on their own, even when they're separated from the actual kind of main um, trio of characters, they still kind of carry it like completely. Because it, as time went on, Tanigaki's character sort of came into his own, and it's just it's been so nice to kind of see him slowly flourish as time went on, and so he grows to know what kind of person he was. I think every single character has actually had that moment this whole entire this whole entire series so far. When you think about it, every single character practically had it. Sugimoto had it. Aspida had it. Shirashi had it. And now and now Tanigaki's having it. I mean, it's one of those things. It can be a different moment because it's so far into the series. But this show is kind of it's set everything up already to actually kind of allow you to actually have that breathing space in between. I think it's structured so brilliantly so far. I think the show is. It's one of those things, this show is so brilliantly structured that you just don't mind the way it goes because so far it's not everything perfectly.
one of the things that one of the, one of the things the show does pretty freaking damn well that is realized as well is the fact that the gold is the main narrative, but in doing so, every single person's person's motivation grew from it. So you kind of had the narratives going on all the all the time as well, which really did aid the pacing a lot because you had you had episodes which didn't really deal with the actual uh, MacGuffin. But in doing so, there was actually moments where characters actually had a mini narrative going on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, completely. Jesus. Jesus. Uh-oh. Didn't think about that one, did he? He's like, oh, you won't fight with a gun. Has a gun. <laughs> the element of surprise, as they say. Man, I love this show so much. I love this show so much. Uh oh. I must say, that's, that's a double uh-oh right there. We had uh-oh, and a double uh-oh now. This episode, this episode's freaking brilliant. Oh my god. This episode's freaking brilliant.
Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, tell me about it. Jesus Christ. That was a, that was a very much a change of um, a change of events actually. I love these characters so much. They're all so great.
Oh,
Oh man. Oh man, that was that was freaking brilliant. I must say, the first half of it was just one of those things that even if it was like maybe twenty five minutes of just them duking it out, I wouldn't have minded because it's just it was brilliantly paced. Oh, it's just one of those things that it just it kept going and going and going and going and going to the point that you just like, oh god, okay, all right, all right, and it just ended. You're like, oh damn it. It's just one of those things that it took me by surprise how brilliantly structured that beginning part actually was because it's one of those ones that it constantly had rising action to it. It's one of those things I always, I always kind of wanted. I wanted to see that rising action that the show can do so perfectly, and it did it perfectly in this episode, I think. It's one of those things this episode just, oh, and then this, and this series as well. I also like the fact that it's one of those things that. It's always constantly kind of subverting what you think is going to happen next, especially with what's actually going on. Like, with the actual kind of the MacGuffin of the series, because it's not always kind of cut and dry what's actually going on here. There's going to be twists and turns constantly, and I think the way they kind of handle these twists and turns is actually really well handled, because it's one of those things that you have to think to yourself, is it true? Isn't it true? We don't actually know. It's one of those things until we actually get to Noporobo and actually see what's actually going on there, because he's he's kind of the key to everything and then in finding that out we might actually find out more about Aspinall's Aspinall's actually ugh. Aspinall's ugh, I actually can't speak Aspinall's actually oh after credit scene after credit scene boys after credit scene Alright, alright, that seems interesting for a setup for the final. See, as I said beforehand, my throat just constantly came out trying to say a sentence. Still is, actually. There we go. So, yeah, as I said beforehand, I, in doing so, you actually might find out a bit more about Aspirin actually as a person because it's one of those things that. We know a lot about her, but again, a lot of a lot of it's still kind of kept to the kept to the back seat just for just for the idea of how um how the plot is actually pacing itself. And I actually think it's actually quite cool because one of those things that we know a lot about these characters, but we don't know all of it about these characters. We only know certain things. And I think the way the show actually does it is actually quite novel because it's actually doing it in such a way that it kind of keeps you guessing, keeps you going. It's one of those things that it constantly gives you little tidbits here and there of the characters and what's actually really going on here. And I think it's actually brilliantly done because it's one of those things that it doesn't it doesn't put all its eggs in one basket straight away and actually kind of tell you everything you need to know because it's one of those things that you kind of... Um, like, it's one of those things that kind of does it to a point that you just kind of want to see... I can't remember what I was actually saying. My brain just kind of stopped. It's one of those things that it kind of... It's it's kept so you kind of want to see what happens next is what I'm trying to say in the end. It's what it kept it's kept it's kept you guessing for the whole entire time. It's kept you invested. It's kept you interested. It's done everything it needs to do as a sh as a show. Actually, kind of keep going and going and going to the point that it actually does in theory um, work in 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 the large context of all things. So yeah, in that way, good job, Golden Kamui, because you're just doing a really freaking good job with the characters. That actually, kind of slowly give us information. That actually, kind of keep us guessing and keep us whether or not we actually want to keep going as well because we might, we might actually change our perception of certain characters. I mean, in doing so, for instance, change the perception completely with certain characters, because that's not the kind of the idea it's going for. But in theory, we actually might, in theory, see certain events in different lights. And I think that's actually kind of a neat thing to do, because one of those things show, shows do tend to actually kind of do this quite often nowadays, is the idea of kind of giving a false perspective on certain events, certain characters. And I actually think it's actually quite cool, because it kind of makes you then realise, oh god, that actually there's a lot more going on here than we actually imagine. And I think it's actually kind of a, a neat thing to do, because it's one of those things, it doesn't actually kind of make the, make the narrative just be one thing. It makes it kind of be a little bit more kind of experimental, and kind of a little bit more open. It actually kind of leads you to your own interpretation of what's really going on here, and I actually think it's actually quite cool. But yeah, I'm going back to that previous first section. I think it's probably the highlight of the whole entire series, because as I said beforehand, it had that rising action to it that just constantly kept you going. And I think Org Orgato is actually as a character, as a formidable foe, was actually really well handled, because one of those things that you thought to yourself, oh god, it's over, he's actually... Um, 
he's, a, he's actually he's actually um, he's actually dead. But in theory, no, he's not. I actually, I actually think it's actually quite cool because he's, if he died at that one point, I'd be disappointed because actually he's a really freaking neat character. I think it's actually one of those ones that I want to see more of as time goes on. I mean, we've only got two episodes left, but I think maybe as an end game boss in the sense of a series, it might be nice to kind of see him back because he's one of those ones that he just doesn't want to go down. He's got he's got a motive. He's got, he's got to keep going. It's actually quite cool. And I just thought the way they actually kind of handled his fight with Tanegaki was actually really freaking well done because it's one of those things that it constantly kept you guessing. You, you thought to yourself, oh my god, Tsunami is here now, so you screwed when you're fairly no, he wasn't because um, it was just a lot more going on what you just you know, what you thought. And I thought, good job there. But as I, say, as I was saying during the stream, which is actually one of those things that I really did like about the series as a whole, is the idea that the MacGuffin is a centralized point in the narrative. It's actually not currently because a lot of things are going on in between. But... That's what the show does. It, it plants the seed of the main narrative, but in doing so, it sprouts kind of little mini narratives as time goes on that actually kind of keep you kind of going because certainly these episodes where it doesn't really deal with the MacGuffin, centra centralized MacGuffin, it doesn't really deal with it too much. But what it does do in theory is actually build a mini narrative in between, actually kind of give the episode purpose. And I think it's one of those things that shows don't tend to do that quite often is the idea of actually making episodes have purpose. Because certainly there's episodes that might in theory just kind of drag on and actually kind of be a little bit like, oh god, why does this keep on going like this? But here, you never really feel as, it feels as if any episode is wasted because each episode kind of brings more to the table, especially with certain characters, especially with certain kind of relationships as well. Because we've got Hijigata as well, who's actually kind of who's very much been a formidable force in the background. He's kind of, he's appeared when he needs to be, and I actually want to see what he will do at the end, because we have this whole entire thing with Tsunami as well. Actually, just, it makes the whole entire thing just seem as if it's going to be a massive battle at the end. It's actually going to be really freaking awesome to watch, because it's one of those things that each character has been built up so well so far that you kind of just want to see what happens with them at the end. And I think it's actually going to happen with Tsunami and Hijigata as well. So it's one of those things that it's a time will tell kind of thing with how the end game will happen. Now I just I think it will be really freaking cool. That's how I'm just seeing it because it just it just it just set up so goddamn well. It just the end game is going to be amazing to watch. It's going to be just one of those things that it's everyone's everyone's going to meet at one point and it's going to be like just a massive full scale battle and I think it's, I think it's going to be really freaking cool. But yeah, I mean. Each character introduces as well just kind of adds so much more to the dynamic, dynamic, dynamic of the show as well. It's one of those things that the show does a lot with the characters. And how they introduce new characters just makes everything just seem a little bit more kind of like realised. I actually quite like the... I like the fact that you kind of think to yourself, oh, he's he's got he's got no kind of ties to anyone, but in theory he actually does. You're like, oh god, okay, so what's going on there? It's just... Each character brings something new to the table that is actually warranted the reason for them being there. And I think, especially in episode 10 as well, because, again, as I said before, I said during the stream, certainly some things can be a detriment to the series. But the way that the way that uh, Gordon Kamui actually kind of structures itself, especially with its characters, especially with the world itself, especially with the narrative itself, that each new addition adds something. And I think it's actually one of those things that a lot more shows tend, need to do this a little bit more, especially with shows that kind of deal with a lot of characters. This idea of actually bringing more things to the table, and certain shows don't do it, but here it's just done perfectly. I think it's actually a brilliant show. It's, it's just all round a brilliant show. I think this episode actually really did just hit home the idea it's actually probably is the best show the whole entire year really this is one of those ones that it just is because it just it's freaking brilliant it really is and it's, it's sad that, it's sad that not a lot of people are actually talking about it more often now because it's just it needs it needs to be talked about because it's brilliant so yeah that is me done for today so as always I have been the driver. If you have enjoyed this whole entire stream on Twitch, then do leave a follow because indeed it does help quite a bit if you enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to leave a like, then do leave a like because indeed it does help quite a bit. If you have enjoyed it here on YouTube and you want to stay that little bit longer, then do leave a sub because indeed it does help quite a bit. But until next time, I've been the driver and I shall see you guys later. Bye for now.